What's going on, everybody? And happy uh, December 1st. Damn, I didn't even really realize that it is December 1st, last day of the, or last month of the year. Uh, 2022 is right around the corner. But before we get there, we got some fun stuff to talk about in this current year with Hawkeye. We're breaking out episode three, talking about all the fun stuff that we got in this very uh, interesting episode with a character that we'll be definitely talking into that uh, may or may not be making an appearance in the show and, and the future impact on the MCU. And we're talking Spider-Man. I mean, it's at this point, it's the most talked about movie of the year uh did you get your tickets did you fight someone for tickets did you spend twenty five thousand dollars for a ticket and we'll talk about all that stuff and just the hype level see where you guys are at because we're literally less than two weeks away from uh maybe the biggest film of uh in the spider-man uh history we'll talk about all that stuff but hey before we get into the discussion bring in my amazing co-host i want to welcome every single one of you all for tuning in if you could it would be greatly appreciated if you can give this video a thumbs up i know youtube has removed the thumbs down video but the thumbs up really helps out the algorithm as well as if you guys have like social media accounts, Instagrams, Twitters, TikToks, whatever you use to kind of interact with your audience, if you could share this uh, link, that'll be greatly appreciated. And then those that are watching on the replay, if you can do the same, that we, you know, I would appreciate that as well. But neither here nor there, excited to talk about this uh, episode of Hawkeye and get into some Spider Man news with these two incredible people. One person here who I'm a big fan of, uh, excited to get her thoughts in this episode, as well as talk about some movies she's recently seen. A uh, really good friend of mine. And just so happy to have her on this uh, episode as we have her every single week. Talking about the one and only Amanda. What's going on, Amanda? Hey, good to be back. Good Wednesdays be are back. fun. It's Wednesdays party time. Wednesdays are so fun. Amanda. <laughs> and, uh, we, you know, we were talking off screen about a movie you just saw uh, with uh, House of Gucci. So, uh, Lord. <laughs> Father, son, please help <laughs> me. Like, right? We need Lady Gaga in the MCU uh, and, and maybe make yeah. an appearance later on, man. <laughs> sure. but, I mean, whatever gets her away from dramas at this point. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> and Jared Leto's he's he's gonna be in the you know in the MCU some probably soon with the multiverse and all that stuff. So we're uh, getting Jared Leto in the MCU, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Get prepared for that. But again, <laughs> why don't you let the fine folks at home know where they can find you, all the great content you have lined up for the people. Well, thank you. Thank you for that intro. You are a gem as always, E. Uh, you guys can always find me over at AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. I'm doing more writing than videos right now because it's been really hectic for me. Um, so you can check out my website, candidxcinema.com. My Don't Look Up review will be up probably next week. So keep it on lock there. And uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And, and I'm really excited to get your full thoughts on the film. Because I know for following you on uh, Twitter, this was a film you were excited for. Leo, yeah. Jonah Hill, Timothy Chalamet. The uh, boys. And, and so <laughs> many great. I mean, Jennifer Lawrence, we haven't seen her in a while. So I'm excited to see, mm -hmm. you know, her taking a back seat for a little bit and getting back in front of the audience. Because I know she just mentioned that she was she kind of felt fatigued. Right. And, and you don't really hear yeah. a lot of actors kind of admitting they're being out in the forefront so much. So I'm really looking forward to not only seeing the movie, but getting your thoughts on the film. Yeah, really excited she, for it. She was really good. And really I'm good. not. Not like I'm not really a fan of hers. Yeah, Controversial. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she's really she surprised me with this for sure. I'm excited to check it out. Yeah. Guys, Amanda's links are in the bio. So check out her written articles. They're they're fantastic. She is a very she's she's well versed. She she can do stuff on video, she can do stuff uh writing form. I mean, come on, she's a super, she's a superhero at this point. She can do everything. Aww. Uh, but this is one <laughs> of our two amazing co-hosts, my boy representing the East Coast. Uh, the Warriors, man, they, they got beat by the Suns, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. But man <laughs> is uh coming from the East Coast, my main man, Chris from Taste Take. What's going on, man? Dang, you call me deep. <laughs> I was trying to, I already like Sweet. repressed that memory. That was tough. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. Tough loss. But hey, it's a long season and uh, Clay's coming back. He's coming back, man. It is a long season. I have to play them again on Friday. So Friday, we'll yeah. See Get how some it goes. revenge, man. We'll see. We'll see. But hey, man, yeah. why don't you let the fine folks at home know what you're about, where they can find you, all that great stuff, my friend. What's goody, y'all? Happy Wednesday. Happy Hawkeye Day. You guys can all find me. All the information in the bio. But I am Chris Tate representing Taste Take giving TV show reviews, movie reviews, um, all that stuff's on YouTube. Uh, if you guys want to subscribe to that, that would be dope. My Instagram's on there as well as my Twitter. So um, I guess it's going with the ride. Let's, uh, let's see what we got to talk about for this Marvel Wednesday. Guys, do yourself a favor. Check out his content. Uh, quick question for you, Chris, as well as Amanda. It's December 1st. Mm -hmm. uh, we got, you know, The Matrix 4, Spider-Man. But is there any film or movie that's that you guys are really stoked for beginning this, do the end of the year uh, for December? Is this something that maybe is slipping under our radars? I'll start with you, Amanda. Is there anything out there you can think of? Um, I think too. I'd probably say Nightmare Alley just because of Guillermo. Like, oh, yeah. 
I really, I really want that to do well for him. It looks good. So yeah, I'm actually um, seeing that tonight. So fingers crossed. Lucky you oh, go. Yeah, yeah. It's good. I'm hoping it's good. I hope you enjoy it because he deserves, he deserves all the love. He's he does. Great. It's been a minute. Uh, Shape of Water was that his last? I think that was his last film. Oh my god. I mean, it's not. The, <laughs> it's not the greatest. I have not movie. revisited that film since I saw it in theaters, uh, which was why like, would 17. So, so it's good. been a minute. He's been producing um, stuff, obviously, but it'll, yeah. it'll be exciting to see what he's been up to. What about you, Chris? Mm -hmm. Is any uh, new movie or show, man? Again, of course, The Matrix, mm -hmm. Spider Man. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? There's so much coming out. So I'm like slipping my Licorice mind. Licorice Pizza, which Licorice you... Pizza, yeah. which yeah, that's coming out. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so I watched Licorice Pizza this week. What is that, like a limited release? Or is that officially a December release? Yeah, thing? so they had a limited window in the last week. I think it was in L.A., and I think it was in New York, too, the bigger markets. But they're going to have a wider release on the 24th, or later this oh, month. Yeah, yeah. I got That's nothing. That's what's happening. That's yeah. what's happening. Canada's yeah. fumbling the ball. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, um, wow. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really excited about the Matrix. I I just don't. I'm not a Matrix guy. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think I think when they were out, I think I was interested into them. But I'm not. I'm just never been into like the whole like Inception type of like these like confusing type of, like movies. I'm not in the business because I'm trying to figure movies out. Gotcha. Um, so not really looking forward to that. The, of course, Spider Man, Licorice Pizza was pretty good. Not as good as I thought it would be, but that was pretty good. I'm interested yeah. to see this. I'm looking at this list now. I'm, I'm interested to check out this movie, which is, I don't think it's in the theater. Encounter with my man. Um, oh, uh, Riz Ahmed. Riz Ahmed, yeah. yeah. And, and Octavia Spencer, I'm right? I'm interested in checking that one out for yeah. sure. And I'm not excited about it, but I am going to watch the new Michael B. Jordan <laughs> movie. On, oh, on yeah, yeah. Denzel. Denzel's yeah. directed yeah. it. Yeah, I yeah. Saw yeah. So I'm interested to see how like Denzel does. I, I just yeah. feel like it, may, it, looks, it looks a little cheesy, but... Yeah, that's, yeah. On my, that's on my radar right now. Okay, okay. And I'm just looking too because I did. I, I dropped my uh, new releases this morning. Uh, the Kingsman. Uh, Any Kingsman fans on yes, the panel and, and the chat? I liked it. Yes. I liked it. I liked it. I liked yeah. it. I liked I've it. I've been waiting three years for that. Three years. Cool, it's so. been a minute, a man. And I don't know. I, I love Matthew Vaughn. I just wish that he would maybe step out of that universe for a little bit uh, yeah. and do some other stuff. Uh, <clears throat> man of Steel. Uh, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what Matthew Let's Vaughn see. has up his sleeve. But uh, <laughs> what else we got? Did you guys see the power of the dog? The yes. Was no. it good? I was really like I was fortunate enough to watch that in theaters, like on yeah. the big screen. It's a totally different feel, but it's a slow burn. Yeah. Slow burn western. I don't vibe with slow burn films. Like they yeah, really have little, to keep yeah. me it engaged. Keep, yeah. Yep. Or else like there's no point. But this right. was just so good. Okay. So good. I've been hearing so great things. Like it. movie of the year. Some people say movie of the year. Do you have hold it to that? Movie it's top ten for me, actually. I'm surprised. And Benedict gives one of the best performances this year. Dead. Well, I'm gonna be watching Sorry. it sometime in the next coming days. Let's <laughs> yeah. see. And what else we got here? Un the unforgettable. Sandra Bullock, Vincent D'Onofrio, John mm -hmm. Berthal, Viola Davis. Is it unforgettable or unforgivable? The un unforgivable. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're yeah. you're telling me the Punisher and Wilson Fisk are in another in the movie same together. movie? Mm, I don't know. Universe Multiverse. building, Amanda. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> are you guys uh, Witcher fans? We got any Witcher fans out there? Hmm? Never. For seen Henry, it. I'd watch. Yeah. Hey. Chris, I'm yeah. telling you, man, I'm, I'm, I never played the game, never read the book, but season one was pretty intriguing, man. I'm a big like kind of fantasy yeah. monster guy, so it, like it, it hit those marks for me. Uh, and I'm just looking at the list. Is there anything else? Boba Fett? Are, are we excited for that? The book of Boba to Fett? To be honest, no, I didn't think it's he deserved this pen off, but I don't think so either. I think there's not a lot either. of like a lot, not a lot of shows are coming. I, I think Money Heist is coming back, which I, I yeah, I, I got to catch up. Money Heist, Heist yeah, a while ago, so I'm not I'm not caught up to watch that, but it seems like a quiet. TV show of December. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Isn't, uh, sorry to go back to movies, but isn't the tragedy Macbeth dropping too? I think it's, it's it has like a theatrical release and I think yeah. Apple TV plus is dropping next month if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, that is something that's oh, okay. definitely circled on my calendar. I mean, Denzel, okay. Francis McDermott, the Conan. I mean, come on. It's like, I can't yes, wait. I got to see that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, we'll see. I think the matrix and, and Spider-Man will be the talk of the town. Uh, and hopefully they yeah. both live up to the expectations. Uh, but we'll see guys. Let us know at, in, in the chat what movies you guys are excited for, uh, as well as on the replay. Cause December is, is a pretty stacked month. So, uh, yeah, let us I see know. Macbeth on here. That's getting yeah. um, the 25th limited. And I think streaming the 14th. Okay. Gotcha. They have definitely... To make the deadline. Oh yeah. To get the old, cause yeah. Denzel, Oscar, yeah. Francis. I mean, come on. We got some, some heavy hitters there, but quick yeah. shout out to everyone joining us. Uh, Rim showing some love. We got our boy CG in the building. Yeah. Uh, we got Matt saying what's up to everyone. What's going hey. on to you? 
uh, and a couple other uh, regular faces that we're seeing here waiting for Mephisto to come up. <laughs> Maybe that was Mephisto in, in, uh, in human mm. form with the, uh, the, the little no. grab in the cheek there. Uh, Encanto, yeah, that's a good film. That's definitely something to keep an eye out for. And uh, of course, The Matrix, you know, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm kind of right there with you. Well, I'm actually a big fan of it, Chris. I love The Matrix. Two and three, know, another conversation, but yeah. I, I, I love I love mind bending, being in the head. What's the meaning of life? the life just be are we all in the matrix i, I kind of get you know down that rabbit hole per se so I'm, I'm excited to see my boy yaya see what he's doing in it yeah uh, and uh, all that fun stuff so uh he looks listen. amazing i don't i don't even like the, the he looks the same like, what the year girl, did bro. matrix one come out 99 99 that's insane. 20 years later, Keanu's still kicking butt. Uh, but quick shout out to uh, Pound the Pavement with the $5 mm -hmm. super chat. So off topic. No worries. I love it. Uh, what's up with Hellstorm? It was a Hulu. Yeah, so that was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was like one that. of the last shows that was like part of Fox, like doing their own like Legion and stuff like that. So once Marvel bought up Disney, they were like, uh, yeah, we we... We, we don't need Hellstorm. They, I mean, they might revisit those characters because they're X-Men type of characters, so we might get, like, something in the future. Uh, but I didn't watch it. Did Amanda, Chris, did you guys watch uh, Hellstorm uh, on Hulu? I don't uh, get yeah. Hulu, so. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it really hits you, man. It kind Look, of came and went. That's two already. I got another <laughs> three strikes, man. And then Hitmonkey, did you, guys, uh, did you guys see the advertisements for that? I'm not too familiar with Hitmonkey. I think it's a Marvel character. Uh, I'm not too sure. I got nothing. Yeah, you, you're hitting us with the, with the, you're stomping us here with Pound and Payment, but uh, <laughs> let us know if you saw the uh, Hellstorm or Hit Monkey. but more importantly, thank you for the super chat, my friend, and tuning in to this uh, discussion. But uh, we got some stuff to talk about. Starting off with uh, this this character here that's been just dominating the, the, the conversation, Spider-Man. Uh, I'll start with you, Amanda. Uh, we got some <laughs> tickets that went on sale the other day, and uh, I want to know, Amanda, did you, did you punch someone in the face for a Ticket. Did you did you spend ten G's for a ticket out in Canada? Just just curious. Did you secure the bag? Did you get the ticket? I, I did. But listen <laughs> to the struggle that I had. Yeah, so let's hear, it, let's hear it. Everyone and their mother. There was a poster. Mm -hmm. Fandango released the time 12, 12 a.m. midnight mm -hmm, midnight mm -hmm. midnight everywhere. It's all I heard. <laughs> okay, stayed up till midnight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everyone's like it's crashing. It's this whatever blah blah. blah. I waited an hour, refreshing, refreshing, nothing. My friend who actually works at the theater, my mm -hmm. local theater, messaged me. He's like, it's noon tomorrow. I said, all right. So I went to bed. <laughs> I went to bed. Everyone else got their tickets, whatever. But at noon <laughs> tomorrow, like the Tuesday comes. Yeah. Everything crashed. Literally Wait, everything they, crashed. They meant noon Tuesday? Noon Tuesday. Noon Tuesday. Noon Tuesday. Instead of midnight, midnight noon yeah, yeah. Tuesday. My I thought you. I thought when you were tweeting about it, you were saying noon Monday. No, no, no. Noon Tuesday, and I That's had to close. wait a whole extra day. So then I noon. I was ready. Had my credit card ready. Okay, this is a whole story. <laughs> I was refreshing the app on my phone while checking on my laptop. I kept going back and forth. Nada. Mm. Everything crashed again. So luckily, I jumped on the highway. Drove really, really fast, really fast <laughs> to my local theater. And I had to go to the kiosk because there was a line of old school. The door. Kiosk, huh? Yeah, had old school. Some dust off of it. Yeah. And I yeah. had to, I wasn't going to wait in line because like I used to work there so I can, I can run this thing myself, but it was gotcha, just gotcha. a disaster. And I had to end up getting tickets for all of my friends because they're like, Manda, can you check this date since you're there? She's can you check one. this date? But yeah, She's that's uh, that was my adventure on Tuesday <laughs> afternoon. I literally, I drove and I was checking and like refreshing at the same time. But anyways, I'm safe. You, sh you should have documented this for us, Amanda. And, <laughs> and showed should. us this journey of how you got your tickets, how you secured the tickets for yeah. you and all your amazing friends to see <laughs> Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. it, it's, it's great. It's great. Chris, man. <laughs> What's the dealio, my friend? You got those tickets in the wallet, ready to go, December 14, 15, whatever this damn movie's coming out. Yeah, I was uh, Amanda saved me actually, because I had I had my alarm set for 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. thinking that it was gonna be a normal AMC. And then I think I think it was Amanda's tweet that said it was midnight. So yeah. I was like, okay, that's got you. That's hopeful. <laughs> of course I would have been up no matter what, but I would have been like up like doing dumb shit. Like I would have been hurting. So of course I logged on. At midnight, and of course, nothing is working. I have two phones, iPad, and a computer going. The whole thing. It's like yeah, it's yeah. like a fucking <clears throat> factory. And 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 I'm in I'm in like the sneaker the sneaker culture, right? Of like yeah, yeah. Jordan's dropping, like whatever, like releases, right? So like yep. there's an epic story. My buddy was waiting on on a, on a drop that he wanted these shoes. To, they said they would come out at noon. 
and he finds out that the, at noon they're all sold out. He's like, "What the hell?" He finds out that the sneaker company released them like five minutes early. Like they just opened the the portal mm. five minutes, and I still didn't learn that lesson. I still didn't <laughs> learn a lesson. So then I'm finding out that AMC did the same thing. Yep. Where they let it they let it go. I think maybe they said someone said up to twenty minutes early. Mm -hmm. If I would have just checked, I would maybe got a ticket, no problem. So I'm <laughs> fighting, fighting. I'm I'm up from twelve <laughs> till two thirty. Jesus Christ. With with I'm like this, bro. Like literally, like I'm two phones, yeah, iPad yeah. going, everything's going. And then I'm refreshing. I know the game. Like Twitter is gonna have my answers or Reddit. So I'm refreshing yep. Reddit. I'm go refreshing to Twitter. go to. Mm -hmm. I'm going, 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 going. Cause then Fandango at first wasn't even showing up, they're even offering them. So I had Fandango, yeah, Fandango refreshing. Was, yeah. And then <clears> someone <throat> told me. On someone told the Twitterverse, hmm. movietickets.com, which feeds from Fandango. Uh-huh. No one was on it. Yep. Oh. So I pull that up at that. I pull it up at 2 a.m. Literally at 2 a.m. <laughs> and it's like it's all it's not like a breeze, but it's like as close to a breeze as you as I would have gotten that whole night. Yeah. And it was crazy. And I got the show, like the I got the four o'clock show. I wasn't able to get IMAX because that was already done through AMC for like yep. a decent seat. And I'm not yep. gonna sit. I'm not gonna just sit just to be in, in in IMAX. Not for this. Like it's like you can't. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'd rather go earlier and like and do Dolby, mm -hmm. um, because Dolby and then Dolby yeah. is just it's like it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a great experience. Yeah. So it's not like yeah, it's sure. not like I'm getting some like you know basic theater, like, right? Which right. no one should do. 480p and the <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. So so I got my little Dolby ticket with the yeah. theater that I wanted, the seats that I wanted, fire seats, mm -hmm. and right in the middle for me and my boy. Mm -hmm. And and it's crazy because like then I wake up like you know Tuesday. Or actually, the normal Monday, mm -hmm. and I hit him like, "Yeah, like I got him," but like he has no idea like what I went through. Like I'm like, he's like, "I was like, I'll appreciate yeah. it, man." He's like, he's like "Yeah, yeah, yeah, good look. I'll be there." I was like, <laughs> "Do you know what I had to do?" I, I tried to send an article about how the internet crashed and all that, and then he was like, "Yeah, I heard." I was like, oh, so <laughs> he, he pays for the nachos though, so it's all yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's it's, it's even now, even now. Well, those yeah. were lovely stories, and everyone in the chat, thank you guys for sharing your stories with us as well. You want to? This is a great story. This here's my story. I think it beats both you guys. <laughs> so it's it's twelve. I didn't buy the tickets. I have not bought my tickets yet. It, is this is insane. this is me. This is my thinking right now. I'm a I'm a man of manifestation. I wanna I wanna be able. Luckily, hopefully they're gonna give you know press screenings, uh, and then I'm gonna see it you know later that week and buy my tickets and see it like with everyone else. But I, I wanna speak into existence that so I'll be able to see it uh, the press screen. Now the reason I haven't bought it is in, in St. Louis we, we have like a pretty good market, but it's not like crazy like New York or where uh, where a man is. This. So I'm I'm thinking the tickets will still be available if it comes to me not getting a press screen. So I did not stay up late at night to get my tickets. So. Uh, yeah, Why? I'm sorry. It's a little bit of a. I, I don't know, man. I did it for Infinity War. I did it for Endgame. Really? And honestly, Chris, I haven't. I haven't bought a movie ticket, uh, and this isn't like a humble brag by any means. So I'm very fortunate to see you know screens and whatnot. But I haven't bought a movie ticket since Saw Spiral. I haven't bought a ticket since Spiral. I've been lucky enough to to see movies in the theaters for press screening or have friends you know go to out with my friends to see a movie. So I haven't like physically paid for a movie in, in quite a few months. So maybe it's that stigma in the head. Like I don't need oh, to so buy a not, movie. You ticket. don't want to. You just want to go to the screening. <laughs> exactly. And then I'll screening? see it. Well, I don't know. I don't know, Chris. There's no there's no word on the screening quite yet for press screenings. Even though I think they they supposedly said it was supposed to be this week. Uh, for yeah. like, there's one in L.A. For figure. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Hopefully next week, my friend, uh, I'll get an email. But if not, I'll, you know, I'm hoping. Either way, though, if you plan on going alone, like, yeah. you know, like, you I'm, I'm like a psychopath. Like, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm online every day. Like, I bought, like, yeah. five, different infinite, like five different Infinity War tickets because I'm, like, I'm going to get a better seat. Yeah. So, like, people cancel it yeah. like, all the time. Like, if you're just willing yeah. to, like, the average ticket person is just going to take what they get. But, like, I'm, like, a psychopath. So, like, you, I'll find a seat. I think I'll be fine. So I still, like, I yeah. bought two separate times just in case. <laughs> I'm not joking. I bought the 3 o'clock in IMAX and the 4 o'clock yeah. in Dolby. Because I'm and like, if I Wednesday, don't make right? it. Is this the 15th that they're doing? Or the is it Thursday? Okay, so Thursday. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So gotcha. I got the earlier showings that day. But I'm keeping them on lock until that day. I'm sorry. I'm not giving them away. <laughs> i'm that person <laughs> hey it's 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 been i love these stories uh again maybe i'll have a story of my own uh maybe uh tom yeah. holland will shoot me a, a dm with uh, some tickets uh or zendaya you know you know we got to hook up uh but no we'll see what comes of it but i do want to talk about some of these articles though as far as as you guys can see on a little ticker here it surpassed infinity war uh it it 
beat Black Widow, which is not surprising, but it did beat, you know, as you guys see, Star Wars, uh, episode seven and eight, uh, or I should say eight, nine. So my question to you, Amanda, as far mm -hmm. as hype level goes, knowing that we're still in a pandemic and there's something out there, some mutation uh, that, you know, is making its way uh, from South Africa. And, you know, hopefully we've learned our lesson uh, for last year. But putting yeah. that aside, Amanda, does this movie have the chance to be a billion dollar club to meet that club in the in the in the world that we're currently living in and does mm -hmm. it have the chance to be a two billion dollar film that's a question i have for you Ooh. is it possible is Damn. it possible amanda you know what <laughs> with these with them breaking ticket, ticket sales sale and like this record like look at that like yeah people crazy. are going nuts for this um, for pandemic box office, yeah, I think that it's going to exceed expectations. I would love for this to hit one billion. I will be very surprised if it hits one billion, <sighs> yeah, considering yeah. the current state of everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it'll <clears throat> it'll exceed expectations. I think it'll yeah. be the best um, CBM this year mm -hmm. that will gain that uh, gain that money. And yeah. make that profit versus everything else. I think that Sony really is just gonna blow it out of the water. Mm -hmm. Um, but listen, I would love for them to do two billion. Like this hype is like ridiculous. <sighs> it's ridiculous, you know. It's and, crazy. And they yeah. haven't said a word. There's no confirmation, but we, you know, under the table, you kind of know there's confirmation of what's what's to come, but like no one knows shit. If you yeah. stay if you are like general audience member, you have no idea what you're walking into. Yeah, yep. That's it. We know because we're we're talking about it and we're invested. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just ridiculous that even the general audience is like, we're gonna go see Spider Man during all of this, and those are the ones that are helping break records. So. Yeah, and I mean, our, our Justin here is saying it's not gonna hit a bill. Uh, I mean, listen, it's uh, I think, and and I don't have the box office numbers in front of me. I should have probably pulled them up, but I think uh, the highest gross movie right now of the year is James Bond, if I'm not mistaken. No, uh, no so. time to die. Like F nine, no. F9? No, one of those two. But I think both of them, they neither one of them yeah. crossed a billion. They're like yeah. 800, maybe 700 at yeah. max. So, um, Chris, my man. And, and by the way, I thought this was so funny. And this is just, uh, again, just showing that man is talking about the confirmation of certain characters popping up. But uh, this is from Tom Holland's Instagram, which I thought to be very <laughs> funny uh, regarding the tickets. Uh, as you guys can see here, this is from his IG story yesterday about getting That's tickets. Good. And it's a great <laughs> meme uh, using that particular Spider Man to get tickets. Uh, but Chris, man, same question for you. Is it possible in this world that we're living in, in the world, um, to this movie to hit a billion dollars, man? Um, possible, maybe. Yeah. I, I, I highly doubt it. But I also think, like, number one, like, when we look, talk about it crashing and stuff like that, like, it's not crashing for, like, Tuesday night. It's crashing for, like, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yeah. Sunday. Like, yep. And it's crashing for, like, the big, big theaters. Like, yeah. if I want a ticket right now, i can probably get without looking a Friday ticket on like a non Dolby or IMAX screen in New York City, which is a big area, big market. So like, I don't think it's gonna break anything crazy, crazy like that. Mm -hmm. But it it, it should do impressive pandemic numbers. And I also don't think Omicron will change anyone's mind about the movies. Like, yeah. like yeah. we don't know anything enough about Omicron yet. Like, it doesn't seem to be more deadly or more contagious than Delta is ha, yeah. is or was. So it's like, it should be more of the same. So like the same people who are vaccinated and boosted should be just fine. I mean, we have to wait for the tests and all that kind of stuff. So like, I can't imagine people like saying, all right, Omicron, nope, I got to stay home. It's like, yeah, we're still in the same pandemic. It's like, you know, from what people say, you know, doctors have reported like mild symptoms for people who have it. Right. The main guy that they found in California, he's he's vaccinated. He's like, has mild symptoms. He's getting better. Like, I just, I see that as like a normal variant of this, uh, of this pandemic. So I don't think it'll yeah. change the box office. I just think Spider-Man, cannot make a billion dollars in a pandemic um because it, it can't like it just, it just can't it's impressive what it is already done and like what it yeah. will do first weekend but like the movie at the end and I, my, my prediction is that we won't love it like we loved endgame because as soon as we left endgame we're like this is insane and then if you didn't see it you will go see it we will leave this movie thinking like that was a really good movie i don't know if we would think like you must go see this like we saw we said that for endgame yeah, Ooh. and Endgame was attached to like in ten years. You had, you had yeah, to, yeah, yeah. You That's had to go to like. I just feel like yeah. we have, we're gonna have more like attachment to Endgame. Like, damn, like that movie was like emotional. Like, this is everything. Spider Man yeah. will have a good time with it. I just don't. I don't see the connection. Maybe. I hopefully I'm wrong. That's how I feel. 
I'm kind of in the same boat, Amanda. What, what's your, and that's kind of the next thing I want to kind of bring up as far as like that hype level. Mm-hmm. In your personal opinion, is it Infinity War in game for you personally? And, and again, these two gentlemen on the background, if Toby, if Andrew yeah. uh, pop up, and it's funny, I was saying on the IG Lab I had earlier today that it'll be funny if they didn't put them in a the movie, but like other actors that were supposed to be Spider Man in the past, like J- Jake Gyllenhaal <laughs> or your boy uh, Timothy Chalamet was supposed to be like in the running for Spider Man before Tom Holland yeah. got it. That would be funny if they were the Spider Man. But yeah. we're expecting these two guys to make an appearance in the film. But I just want to mm-hmm. know, Amanda, is it is it that level for you? Are you as excited for this film as you were for In Game and Infinity War? <sighs> No, I'm not as excited. I'm excited yeah. for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that it is matching for me at the same time. I, I don't I don't know how to even explain it. It's just I think that there is an attachment to, you know, Toby's Peter yeah. and Garfield's Peter. And I think that fans who have been there since day one Marvel, which we all have, it's like that's the attachment that we have to this entire Spider-Man like franchise. Yeah. You know, like it, we've seen them multiple times over and over again. I'm doing like a rewatch now. I went back mm-hmm, and I, mm-hmm. I started watching them, right? Because there's a, an emotional connection. There's an, a level of nostalgia that hopefully, hopefully that uh, this in that No Way Home is going to bring. But obviously, like Endgame and Infinity War, I preferred Infinity War to Endgame. And, and I it was more Same. of an impact Infinity War on me with those characters personally mm-hmm. um but obviously after 10 years it's like holy shit like this coming to an end like yeah. there's a finality to this yep. you know um where with this one it's like now it's like infinite possibilities and especially after this next article like, with amy pascal yeah. letting some just vomiting some stuff out that i don't think was supposed to get out yeah. uh but no i'm right there with you amanda in regards to the, the excitement it's 10 years versus and, and keep in mind i mean this is 20 years i guess in the making because we really haven't yeah. seen to- or uh toby in, in such a long time but again like chris was mentioned just that build up from yeah. iron man all the way up to infinity War, all the way up to Endgame. i don't think that it matches at least for me mm-hmm. it doesn't match that peak yeah. of excitement and I, I really watched, think that yeah, the, totally. the conversation can't be had unless it's like a non-pandemic. Like you're not going to have mm-hmm. pandemic Spider-Man compete with non-pandemic Endgame. Like you just yeah, can't. For sure. yeah. If it was no you're pandemic, right. you can have a great argument, and like sure. you, who knows? Like maybe I would still vote for Endgame a, a little edge, but like yeah, it's just it's like tough. Yeah. It's like it should be very impressive, and they should be proud of what they get. If um, they, but, if it gets two hundred million open a weekend, Chris, that conversation will definitely be in. And, and the fact that we're in a pandemic, and if Spider-Man is yeah. able to cross two hundred million, that is a feat that. Yeah. Should be, you know, talked about, which we'll see, man, what, what comes of it. Because I think, and, and I don't know, for you guys as theaters, are they doing full capacity at, you, at your local theater, Amanda and Chris? Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, there's no, Thank there's God. nothing really holding people back to, to mm-hmm. seeing it uh, at this point. So, we'll see, man. And, and by the way, I watched Infinity War because it was like the anniversary of the trailer dropping four years ago. That trailer still is like way better than any of the spider-man trailers for me and personally I was gonna say yeah the same thing too, that so ending, much better. even like the when when thor picks up the hammer uh in, in front of uh marvell come on, come on like, man. these trailers have not given me that, that I'm, I'm right there with you chris yeah. yeah yeah unless the only way be better than the trailers are... i know that for sure i know I hope that. so but still, hope like so. you got to give me a little because it's like end game didn't even so, really it didn't really show us like what to expect it just gave us a little like okay just know what what we've given you yeah know what this is Here's yeah. what, like it just gave us that energy. I was just like, damn, this is they impressive. lied to us too, though. Yeah, even did. Infinity Trickery. War trailer, they lied to us. Trailer so. trickery, as they do, as they yeah. do. But one more little piece of news with Spider Man himself, uh, Amy Pascal, who I thought, by the way, I didn't even know she was still head of Sony. I thought she deuced like two, three years ago, but apparently mm-hmm. she's still uh, in charge uh, to a certain extent because she came out to talk to uh, speaking of Fandango. She had an interview with Fandango talking about the future, uh, and in particular Tom Holland's future in the MCU. She flat out said. That listen, this is uh, we're working on another film right now as we speak. We're working on the fourth Spider Man, that's one of a trilogy, a second trilogy with not just Sony but Marvel MCU continuing this relationship, making Tom Holland potentially the only superhero in the MCU that's going to get six solo films. Uh, and for him to be in that role for such a long time is something a feat of within itself. Uh, but then in the last day or so, Variety has come out uh, and said uh, that. Amy, that it hasn't been official. She might have spoken a little bit too early, but I mean, someone of her caliber saying that it's it's it, it reminds me. I don't know if you guys remember this uh, moment in time <laughs> where Amy was talking about uh, the future of Spider Man, and I and I got the picture here, Mr. Kevin Feige. He's probably looking at Amy the same way here, like what what are you talking about, Amy? What are you saying right now? Uh, so, uh, Chris, tossing it to you first, man. If the rumors are to be true, which I think it is, 
Spider-Man, Tom Holland, three more movies in the MCU with uh, Sony and, and with Craven being out there, uh, you know, all the stuff that we got with uh, Morbius and, and all this stuff. Venom, are you excited for this uh, this new chapter of trilogies for Tom Holland Spider-Man? Yeah, of course. Um, I also think it's insane. I always say this, like it's literally insane how people think it's so hard to just not talk about these things that are not like <laughs> it's impossible. They have a gun, they literally have a gun to their head and yeah. force them to say these things, Chris. I don't get it. It's like, <laughs> yeah, we we, like, we we love we love what Tom's done. We we hope to work with him in the future. We just we just we love how the fans have responded to him. Yep. And we you know, we're just really looking forward to this new this new release and see how the fans you just said that on the fly. You just said that on the fly, Chris. And these people can't yeah. even do that. <laughs> yeah and then it's like you know when they're pushing you all right no that's it that's all i guess all the time i have it's like so easy and so it, it frustrates me but of course like we're excited to see um tom holland movies like it's like because like you know we're losing a lot of our like og avengers so it's like yeah. it's good yeah. to see like a familiar face mm -hmm. um so yeah it's good news I, and the funny thing that you mentioned too chris about the whole her bringing this up the i wish i had the transcript of the interview she brought it up like it wasn't like forced out of her she like it was a question about the future and she's like oh yeah by the way just to clarify things we're still working with marvel and we're doing three films like she willingly said that like which again, you have just enough buzz up. around your, your your content like you don't need to like make it hype it's not like the buzz Listen. is dying and we're like well, this shit's dying. No one cares about Spider-Man. No, we care. Like, we crashed the internet. Like, this all is night. the photo. This is the, Kevin, this yeah. is the photo I look when I was like, hey, Amy, what you doing? What, what you doing, Amy? But tossing it to you, Amanda, just your mm. take on, and then everyone's speculating it's going to be the college years. We're going to get Gwen Stacy. We're going to get into Norman Osborn, Harry Osborn. Mm. Dive into the more adult stuff that we haven't gotten with the, you know, the high school Spider-Man. So if it yeah. were to be true. Are you excited for this three re-up deal? And what are you expecting to see uh, from this maybe next three films with Tom Holland? I'm hyped. I thought he was going to be done, to be perfectly honest. He um, thought he was going to be done, what, two weeks ago? He I said, said it. I'm like, he's finished. Yeah, yeah, he said it. Liar. Yeah, what a liar, 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 Tom Holland. He's gotten better. I, I mean, guess he's learned his line skills from uh, Andrew Garfield. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I'm excited. I think uh, there's so much that they can do with the, the next trilogy. And what I'm more excited for is like the integration of Venom moving forward. And like, we don't know if he's going to be in No Way Home, if he's going to be the six, you know, yeah. all that stuff. But I think that's what I'm excited for, for Sony and Marvel to do more together because there's so there's so much. There's so many characters that you can bring in and do solo films and like do that kind of stuff and introduce mm. other, you know, other Spideys. I think that it it's a chance to introduce yeah. a live action Miles Morales. I think that would mm -hmm. be really sick for them to do. And then after we're done with Tom Holland, you just set up Miles and he's mm -hmm. there. And uh, I think that'd be really cool. Or we could do like like Nova being introduced to, and like you get all those characters. There's so much that you can that, that you can do. So I'm excited. I agree. I, I totally. I, I'm right there with you, man. In regards to Miles, maybe being something to introduce, it will yeah. be kind of. I guess for me, and I'll just have to get over the fact that Tom Holland will probably always look like he's 20. But to me, always the Miles and Peter relationship was like the older Peter and a younger yeah. teenager. I don't know how they're going to play that off, mm -hmm. uh, but we'll see uh, if that is a, the route that they end up taking. And who knows what the future holds for. Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, is there still some uh, webs in their veins to continue those characters if they wanted to do so? If Sony, because at this point, every, you know, this whole Sony verse is, is, is expanding more than I thought it would. So yeah. we'll see. Again, Amy uh, Pascal let the cat out of the bag. But I think um, after Spider Man No Way Home, how the things will end up, it'll probably lead right into four and, and then five and six, and who knows what the rest of the Spider Man uh universe will yeah. look like after uh you know two weeks from now. But let us know in the chat, everyone, if you're excited for this uh uh somewhat of an announcement, an uh, unofficial announcement uh by Amy Pascal. And again, I just I just Kevin at this point, I'm pretty sure Kevin Feige is just uh He's just at home, just like, uh, you know, counting his millions of dollars and just like, all right, another one bites the dust. Let's go ahead and make another uh, banger of a film. So let us know in the chat, guys, if you're excited for uh, Mr. Tom Holland coming back for three more films and uh, if you got the tickets for Spider-Man No Way Home. But we got a fun episode to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, on Hawkeye. Uh, Amanda, starting with you first, mm. just your initial take after watching this third episode, which was titled Echoes, uh, just your, your mm. feeling after watching this episode. It was better than the first two combined, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> like, I don't want to say it that way, but I, I, I enjoyed it a lot more. Um, it moved a, a bit faster for me. The pacing was good. Um, we got a nice introduction to a brand new character that's going to get their own show. So that was important. Um, 
there's some great emotional moments, I think, between Kate and Clint that I really valued and gave them uh, some development. And the action scenes, finally, were just so bomb. Um, but yeah, I really, really like this episode, and I hope that they keep the same pacing um, for the next, uh, for the second half. I couldn't have said it better myself. Chris, yeah. man, same thoughts with you as in regards to feeling like this episode was maybe a little bit more fleshed out than the first two, uh, or was it maybe a setback for you? I did not like this episode. Oh, um, here we go. Here Whoa. We go. Now, I knew I was gonna hot take it. Actually, I didn't know what you guys thought about this episode, but I guess I guess you, you thought kind of lower the first two, so I guess they're going to go up. But yeah. I liked what I liked about this episode was is that the beginning? Did it start with Echo as a kid mm -hmm. with her dad mm -hmm. signing? Yep. Love that. I love everything with the kid. So yep. I was like, damn, like and again, we talked about it last time we were talking about the interaction between oh god, Kate. Kate, Bishop? right? Yeah. yeah, so Kate and her dad, I was like, damn, like, I don't even feel like this connection of, like, of course, that's your dad, but, like, I didn't feel that connection, but, like, immediately, of course, maybe it's, like, she's, he's signing and he's showing compassion. Like, right away, I already felt like a, a much bigger connection. Yeah. So I, I love that. I love the dragon, um, uh, you know, the, the example he gave about going between worlds, like, that's, like, that's some, some deep shit. I thought that was fire, watching her, like, study the martial arts. Um, so I like the kind of stuff with her, but I got, and when you talk about the action, like, I thought the CGI was kind of cheesy this episode. I didn't like, I didn't like the action scene from him in the toy store. It felt like it felt kind of home alone -y. Like the whole episode felt kind of home alone -y and a little cheesy. Mm -hmm. Home alone's not cheesy, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> it just felt a little off. And I loved Hawkeye's action scenes, but hers yeah. were like so unbelievable. Like she's swinging around this pole and like tripping guys. It's like it, it looked like like Three Stooges kind of things. Shop, she's pushing guys with shopping carts. Like these guys are like killers. Like you'd be dead um there's a there's some good things to take from it you know the potential of you know potential characters coming up echo story that we want to see more of um the the, the you know the pim ar arrows like there's like little parts where i was like okay that's cool i like that but like as an yeah. overall episode i was like ah this is not it and i really i, I was kind of in the minority last week because i, I kind of liked how the show started with one and two yeah i didn't really like this one so Interesting take. I do agree with you though, Chris, in regards to the little, the pin part of the pin thing, you know, the little Easter eggs that we got throughout the episode, which we'll talk about the big Easter egg with a potential kingpin potentially, but yeah. I'm so there with you with uh, that, that father and daughter relationship. I felt more of a connection with Maya and her father, which I don't know if they mentioned his name or not versus Kate and her dad. Uh, very similar situation. They only got like uh, you know, two scenes together, but I definitely and that actor, I, I wish I wish I wrote his name now. He's great in everything I see that actor in. Uh, mm -hmm. whether it's he's a bad guy in Doctor Sleep or a good guy uh, in other films, he's just he just is a great actor. And I think you hit the nail in the coffin, uh, Chris, regarding just that quick moment in Maya. I, I'm excited for her. I want to see her series like right away, just seeing that origins that we get from her to open up the episode. Which you know, let's just go ahead and dive right into just the beginnings of this episode. As uh, Chris kind of alluded to, we we meet. You know Maya at a young age. I, I love that. Last week we ended with her, and we start this episode with her as we see she, you know, she's signing in, in class, and her dad's talking about living in two worlds. Uh, which Chris, I know you mentioned the dragon thing. I, I mean, I don't know yeah. where my mind went to uh, Shang Chi uh, when she brought up mm. dragons and just two yeah. different worlds. Like the dragons are in another world with uh, Ta Lu or whatever that world was in Shang Chi. So I love that conversation leading to her going to her karate class. And uh, I'm gonna toss it to you first, Amanda. When you saw this, let me move this banner out of the way. When you saw this suit uh, pop up on screen, uh, and and uh, you know a little little chuckle, uh, where did your mind immediately go? I think everyone kind of knows, but I want to hear from you, Amanda. I know what is, that. Uh, What's this chuckle? Where's this chuckle? <laughs> I know that chuckle. I know that hand. I know that suit. <laughs> We're just sitting there like we know all of this. We know who's yeah. here. So uh, it went straight to Kingpin. Yeah. It went straight. It just, this that's guy. where my mind went. This that guy, guy that yeah. guy right there. And, and awesome. honestly, <laughs> and honestly, like D'Onofrio has not been quiet on Twitter not whatsoever. <laughs> so like, it's totally him. Yeah, bring this Twitter up yeah. right quick. Yeah. Do it. Cause like, it's totally him. And, yeah. um, it was subtle, which I appreciate it because that yeah, means I like agree. in, you know, the last half, um, of this season, he will make an appearance and it's going to be killer. It's going to be a really good one. Um, but yeah, I liked, I liked the backstory, uh, for echo. Um, yeah. and it, it was really emotional. And I do agree that like that father daughter connection, um, 
was stronger than than Kate's. But I really appreciated that you're showing the sign language on screen and that, you know, they're like her own struggle and all of that. Um, mm -hmm. And she's a fighter. I think that's really important to show yeah. um, just for her and uh, and then know where it's going to lead. So I've, I, I have a couple of theories where it's going to go with like the echo show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really excited. And I, I, we know Kingpin's coming, echo so show. it makes complete sense. Yeah. The show. He's yeah. I, He's so coming. yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited. And I think that for me personally, I'm getting ahead of myself, but if we do get a season two of Hawkeye and it's like the underground NYC type of route with the organized crime, like I'm totally down for that. And it, I think it's the best character to do it versus like, obviously Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It doesn't, makes sense for them to get a yeah. season two in that case and then it's like mm -hmm. movie bound but right. with hawkeye i really do think they have so much that they can do so, so much. much i totally agree and shout out and rims yeah. i totally agree with you too that little girl was like that was perfect casting like the so transition good. from seeing her little and obviously as an adult was was perfect yeah. and something you mentioned to amanda which i think is a really good connective tissue between kate bishop and maya is that they both they both lost their fathers very differently but they lost their fathers at a young age mm -hmm. uh and, and kind of having that maybe to to you know to to compare them to and see how the paths they've taken uh down you know uh with obviously Maya working with organized crime and obviously Kate leading her way yeah. into maybe being an avenger so it's really interesting seeing those kind of parallel stories of losing your father at a young age and what that meant to those two two uh characters but uh Chris man same question for you my friend when it comes to this uh this little moment of uh which Amanda said it perfectly that little tease that's how you tease that's how you tease ladies and gentlemen you don't just yeah. throw it you know give it to us all in one episode you just slowly have the audience kind of come up with their own thoughts and theories or what have you uh and uh Chris man, I'm just excited to hear your thoughts and so number one this, this beginnings of Maya losing her father but of course what this means uh with this uncle character that uh we, we were pretty much maybe thinking that is Kingpin yeah, no, I, I sort of, when I was watching it, I didn't have any idea who it was because I, I didn't watch him on that show. So oh, I you haven't have seen, any, oh, that's right. You haven't I never watched it. Oh, right, right, right. I know, I know, I know. Mm. You gotta watch it, Chris. You got to. You bro. need to like binge it before No Way Home, oh, to be perfectly honest. I'm not going to lie. How many seasons is it? Three. Three, Three seasons, really quick. nine, ten episodes, Amanda? Nine or ten? Yeah, or I think it's nine or ten. Yeah. So quick. They're, they're great. Chris, I'm not hyperbole, bro. It's Do one it. of the best Marvel shows that they, and not even MCU, insane. but like Marvel in general. It's like one of their best yeah. like stories. And Punisher in season. All right, all right, all right. You have my commitment. Do you it. You got to check it out. Just at least it. watch season one. At Just, least. Just, King yeah. Season one. yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, he's the main, yeah, he's the main yeah. antagonist uh, for season yeah. three. Right. is more of a, a another character, but yeah. yeah. Oof. All right. All right. <laughs> we'll see. I'm going to watch it. So, so I didn't recognize the, the thing, but then of course, yeah. you know, it made a lot of sense when I was reading the articles after. So that makes yeah. sense. The opening was great. I thought the girl was perfect. Um, she just played it like perfectly. And then it's like, you mm -hmm. find out it was just about like all like stuff that she's overcome, like her leg, her hearing. Yeah. Yep. And just yeah. like how, like, of course, she's like, wants to go to the, the school for like the for the deaf. But he's like, no, nah, like, you're going to figure this out. And it's going to, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to be better off for it. Which then I guess gives us the like emotional attachment to then later in the episode when we find out he gets killed. So I see what they're doing. So I, I, I really like the setup here. It just, they just great lost. stuff. It's yeah. great stuff, man. And and to your point, too, uh, I think Amanda might have brought up that she, and you guys might may or may not know, she has been announced that Echo will have her own spinoff series, very similar yeah. to uh, Agatha Harkness is getting her spinoff series. So they're seeming to making these villains, anti-villains of a sort, you know, get to know these characters. So I hope that we get to see her dad again in that series. We get to see this mm -hmm. young girl again uh, and, and obviously get a little bit more of the origins because from what I understand from the Echo character in the comics, she was the uh, kind of ad adopted daughter of Kingpin. And the kind of the way that story plays out is that yeah. she, Daredevil, blamed her father's death, uh, or to say Daredevil was the one that was like supposedly the one that killed her dad. But obviously they're kind of playing with the mythology and having Ronan be that particular character. So it'll be really interesting to see how her series plays out and, and what we get with that uh, actress in that show. But to uh, go back to what we were just talking about with Vincent D'Onofrio that Amanda brought up earlier, uh, Chris, man, if you're not following this man on, on Twitter, he's a pretty he's an interesting Christ. follow. Uh, this was his photo earlier today. <laughs> uh, when the episode dropped, uh, the show, a little Christmas tree to everyone, you know, maybe some uh, holiday uh, cheers or some holiday trees alluding that he might be in a holiday-ish type of show. Uh, and then let me pull up his other uh, tweet that he had a little bit earlier today. 
uh, alluding to, and this is just random. This came out of kind of nowhere. Uh, if you guys can see, he just said that, you know, keep, I was told to keep my mouth shut, this, that, and hmm. the other. And people are like in the comments, like, Vincent, is just, you're talking about Marvel giving you an NDA? He's like, oh, no, I just happen to be walking the streets, just thinking about, like, come on, Vincent, like, come on, bro. Like, uh, you're in the show, my friend. You don't have to. You're an actor, but you don't have to act with us. He's we so we kind of know what's going on, man. But uh, and listen, I'm excited to see if it is to be true that he's going to be making an appearance in the show. Uh, and the man, I can't wait to hear your theories on kind of where this might lead. But I'm getting excited. But I don't want this to overshadow Hawkeye, which I don't think it will. But I would be mm -hmm. excited to see what they do with that character if he is to make an appearance in the show. But a great ending, like you guys both said. Uh, but I'm really uh, want to get into the meat and potatoes as far as Chris's criticisms with the kind of the fighting sequences, which leads us into the next moments here where we see uh, kind of uh, a flashback of a sorts where we see her, you know, kicking ass. Like we mentioned, she's a badass. She can, you know, she she can follow your senses she's almost kind of like a i don't want to say a taskmaster ish but she can read you know your your where you're coming from what moves you're going to go to very formidable uh villain and someone that can definitely handle her own uh, and we get the moment when we see her dad get killed uh with ronin which this is what i was hoping for with the show showing us more of that ronin stuff showing us what he did within those five years showing us who he came across uh in those five years so i love that we're still kind of tying into the ronin storyline which man i know that was something you were uh uh, looking to see as well. So did you kind of like that moment seeing Ronan in action taking out uh, Maya's dad? Yeah, I mean, it was it was really well done. I think it was executed well. And um, I, for me, Ronan was like, yeah, we get to see more of him and that's great. But I feel yeah. like it's also like it's too late kind of to dive into it. I don't know. Like it's great at the same time. It's like, yay, yeah. we're getting it. But then it's like, it's been so long yeah, and like Ronan, you. you know, but it was still, it was still fun to see that and, and kind of to see where Echo's position was in that case yeah. and, and how it affected her. Um, they did really like just strong fight scenes in this one. And it, like that, that first one, I was like, so cool. And hopefully they, it picked up and then this yeah. episode really did. So, you know, like I, it's great to see Ronan. That's great. Like to oh, see that him. connection and yeah, it's yeah. really cool. And we got <clears throat> to see that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for me, it's like, I don't know. Past, not, you're past the Ronan past, stuff. Just, like it's yeah. also not enough, and like it's a whole yeah. thing. But yeah. I agree with you. I agree, Chris. Man, <laughs> yeah. just your thoughts on, on the Ronan character, and 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 if you would like to see maybe a little bit more the the past of who he came across, who else did he kill, who other uh, mafia gangsters on the street that he came across? Are you okay with just like okay, we we heard a Ronan, they kind of maybe dropped the ball on in game and not explain the character, or would you like to see more of the character in the future? I like Ronan, and I like that, that story. I always talk about it in all of our streams about how I'm so interested to see what went on in those five years. Same. So I'm, 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 yeah. I'm, 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 in that, I'm in that same camp. What I'm not cool with is people acting like they couldn't figure out who the fuck Ronan is. Like, <laughs> it's a Superman this, thing. He just takes off his glasses, and you don't know who he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's like uh, Jerry Seinfeld said. Like one of his first jokes was talking about how like. At the Delhi Planet, he's like, no one can figure out this guy Superman. He's like, these are journalists. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I always thought of that. I was it's like, and then it's a comic book trope. We'll just leave it to comic book trope. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just like, y'all don't, y'all don't see what's happening here. I, I thought that this episode, Kate would have said, like, would have okay, figured yeah. it out. Like, yeah, yeah like, this I thought is you. so too. And then I guess there's an angle of like, maybe that wasn't Clint Ronan that killed this dude. Um, so I guess there's a, as a chance for that too. <laughs> That's a possibility. Watch it be like. And watch it be Matt Murdock, and then that's going to be a reveal afterwards. I, and yeah, then my, it's actually Matt. Fall out. It's okay. that, I, like, I don't know. I never thought of that, Chris. In regards to uh, Clint not being the um, the Ronin in that moment, I guess who I don't know. Maybe that's a story. Because even in that scene, they didn't show a lot of Ronin. Like it was, it was like blinking, yeah. you missed it kind of type of thing. Like yeah, yeah. You didn't see a clear view of like. Hmm. You're right. Who this guy was, or who this person was. Okay. Okay, Chris. Okay. All right, man. We'll see. That would be, I mean, uh, because uh, Kate and, and and as as the audience, we'll get to that scene when she's talking about, you know, you're protecting this person. And we, we obviously know we know him to be Ronan, but you know, maybe to stories twist plot, maybe it was another Ronan out there that did or like I'm gonna go that hard to be him. protecting this suit. Yeah, like the, yeah. why don't you just be like, Why do you want this so bad? Like, why do you care about this suit? <laughs> yeah. This is my fucking suit. 
I'm, I'm not, trying to think if there anyone that we've met in the MCU who's so close to, I mean, we don't know if he has a brother. We don't know if Clint has a brother. We you know his oldest son, true. no way would, you know, he no. doesn't fit the suit. So I don't know, Chris, you might be on us something. Maybe there is another runner out there. I don't know. Chris, There's a stuff. twister Roo coming. Yeah, yeah maybe a little Iron Man 3. Everybody can wear the suit. <laughs> Yeah, hey, there you see? go, man. Hey, man, you're getting me excited, man. You're getting me excited, Chris. But <laughs> kind of moving on to the episode, and I know we're going to – and this is where I'm going to kind of get Chris's – pick his brain on this uh, moment here in regards to this fight sequence. It, it was a little bit – you know, literally, it's like a kid fight scene because they literally jump in like a bunch of like balls, and there's like – you know, it's very <laughs> – it's not as as hardcore as you would think it is, and I think that that the bros, the the tracksuit mafia, they, they're supposed to be a little tongue in cheek. So to Chris' point in regards to like killers, yeah, they're killers, but they're also a little like kind of goofy, three stoogy, which is very comic. Like you're not gonna be talking to this girl yeah. as you had kept as God. a prisoner about your dating life. Like you're hey, not. Hey, hey, hey bro, I was bro, in listen, tears. Bro. I was listen, in bro. tears. Yeah. I'm taking my girl to the to the to the Imagine Dragons, Imagine bro. Dragons. She takes her sisters, bro. What do, um, what do you think, Kay? I, I, I'm Imagine right there Dragons with you. It's uh, good, though. I ain't gonna hold you. It's good, it's good. I, I thought about this episode, like, how Brandon could be complaining about the Marvel comedy. Like, this is the kind of episode that Brandon would probably hate. Like, yeah. he's not on this, but if, if you talk to him, you just ask him, like, do you hate this episode? And I'm always, like, willing to give them more jokes because I like the jokes, but, like, this is, like, there's no way he's a, he's approving know, of this. This comedy to me, and I know I was one, me and Amanda were in the minority with the whole, uh, uh, the costume scene last week with episode two. This yeah. was more, to me, this was funnier, that interaction that it was and Clint fighting yeah. uh, grills for his suit and literally bending over backwards to give him a oh, suit. Yeah, I, I, I found, about that. Yeah, yeah, I found this comedy to be a little bit, and Kate yeah. too. I like Kate's going back and forth that she's kind of, it goes into her character <laughs> talking so too great. much and all that. I, I found it to be funny, man. You're and man, it looks like you did as well. I did. I loved it because he just kept going. It's like, bro, bro <laughs> I've, I got two tickets for Imagine Dragon. And then she's like, at least you're not going to see Imagine Dragon. She's like, I love <laughs> Imagine Dragon. I was like, oh my God. It was just so funny. And they're on these stupid, like, mechanical, like, it's, it hit. It, it, it's, got me. it was it got funny. Me. I was like, wait, I actually like the Tracksuit Mafia now because it was just so <laughs> funny. But yeah, I look, this is what happens when. For me, anyway, the writing gets better. Yeah, and I think that yeah, yeah. this episode was just so balanced with humor, emotional moments, and really solid action scenes. So I think this was the most balanced out of the three, and that's why I, I liked it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And and kind of leading to the, the scene, you know, the, the joke's kind of tempered down because the real boss uh, is coming into the room as Maya is talking to Kate and, and trying to read their lips and what have you. And, and, you know, she has a conversation with Hawkeye, like, Clint, why are you here? You know, and, uh, you know, she's saying, and which I'm so glad they addressed this because that was one of my criticisms with episode one. There's no way. I know they were kind of in dark areas, but Kate Bishop in the suit does not fill out the suit like Ronan. So it was just kind of like silly to me that they were thinking there was Ronan running around the streets. Like yeah. the suit's literally hanging off of her. Neither here nor there. I'm glad Maya was smart enough to at least address it. Even if you weren't in the suit, you have some type of ties. Why are you like Chris? Or why are you protecting it so much if you guys don't mm -hmm. know who it is? But I love where... Uh, metaphorically speaking when clint tells her you know black widow she killed ronan technically she did because if it wasn't for her getting him in yeah. tokyo and you know yeah, taking, him, going, yeah, yeah. giving him hope she yeah he still would have been doing that so i kind of love that and again i thought of that moment don't give me hope in game some good stuff there but you know he says that it, that ronan's dead and this is where we get the kind of i guess the goofiness that chris was alluding to he breaks out of the uh the pony uh you know there and they're running around he gets his arrows. I think Maya was giving him a little bit of run for his money. Uh, yeah. and, and seeing him with his arrows is obviously a cool thing to see, but she kicks his ear aid out. Uh, and before we go to the street uh, chase, just your thoughts on this moment of the, the fighting going on with Maya versus Clint uh, with you, Amanda. What did you think about that kind of sequence that she, like I said, she went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hawkeye? She did. We got also some arrow, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And like we got some arrow action, which is always That's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for me, it was like when he did get his bow and arrow, I'm like, oh, conveniently, you just fell into <laughs> this room and like, haha, the whole thing's like hey, right there. I was, was like, oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm like, wow, convenience is great, guys. Good job. But, um, yeah, I thought it was really great. She went toe to toe and you could see and you could feel that she knows what she's doing and like she is going to kill you if she could. Yeah. Like that mm -hmm. that is what you want from your like main villain in this case. Yeah. So I did feel that and um even in regards to like the sign language and she says that like technology is holding you back and like she crushes his hearing aid. Yeah. 
there's there's still a connectivity between them because um because of their their death so i think that that's just really interesting to have both of them present and fighting and have uh you know the rest of the episode for clint to deal with the fact that he can't hear and it was like her crushing it and giving him that opportunity to kind of explore that again so um i she's she's terrifying she's scary she I is. Think she's scary and she and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hawkeye. She went toe-to-toe. -to -toe, and I love that moment. Like you meant when they were talking about he relies on technology. He's thinking of, you know, obviously being an Avenger. But she's like, no, the hearing aid. And it's just like it could be a disadvantage for you if you don't use your natural instinct. So I kind of yeah. love just her kind of approach to this combat in general. But Chris, man, before we get to the, the, the that's the, the goofiness. Is this where the goofiness mm -hmm. kind of takes over for you, man, with Kate sliding on the pole and Clint, Clint going into the the, the Chuck E. Like, cheese? Uh, fighting with shopping carts. Like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> it was fun. Like, 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 like Clint's fighting for real, for real. And like, yeah. this girl is sliding around. Stopping like, for, like, uh, for tracksuit mafia members, right? Great. Yeah. Shopping cart. Another thing I didn't understand, too, it's like, Echo is a regular girl, woman, and like right. he, she's like follow Clint, like get more information on Clint Barton. And I think in real life, like I would just be like, isn't he friends with Thor? Like, can't wouldn't just Thor just come kill us all? Like, like can't he just call the Hulk and just come beat our ass? Like, I feel like people wouldn't be so bold to catch yes. Avengers slipping like that. I guess the yeah. argument could be made is like maybe you think that the other Avengers are like gone or like not around to off like, world life. doing some more off world. But yeah. I yeah, always yeah. think like nobody's gonna punk Clint. Like I walk <laughs> around so crazy. Like you know my friends are. You know you get that friend and like you know, homies, yeah. You, like you get friends with like an eighth, an eighth grader and you're like, nah, we're not we're not doing this because I got an eighth grader that's gonna come beat everybody like that. <laughs> so I, I, I was thinking about that when people are like trying to like punk like. Clint or, or, or the street whatever. level, like, the, the, the yeah, Natasha like was still around, wounds, like Spider Man, like, yeah, like my, like my friend is Spider Man, he's a teenager <laughs> who will kill, like, who can beat all your ass, like. <laughs> It's, it's I guess to me. if I were Maya, like you mentioned, I think you answered your question. Thor is off doing something else. Captain Marvel, mm -hmm. Doctor, this is they're not worried about the street level stuff. We can mess with Kim. We could punk him. He's like homie, you know, he, he ain't with his homies. You're not around your homies, so let me go ahead and make my move. So maybe that's the excuse, or maybe that's how how like how much yeah. respect she wants. So she's going for an Avenger, uh, which again ties back to she's really the she doesn't care who it is. It could be Thor. Who knows? I don't think Thor would obviously get captured by the tracksuit mafia group, but it shows that. Friends. She's willing to go to the lengths to capture or kidnap an Avenger to find who Ronan is. I guess it shows how determined she is that she's willing mm -hmm. to go toe to toe with an Avenger. Uh, but I think, and, and Chris, you might uh, agree with me here, uh, but at least this action set piece, at least for me, was fantastic. And that's the car chase. I'm, I'm a car chase fanatic. I love car chases. Uh, the Born Identity franchise to me has some of the best car chases ever. Uh, and of course, you know, Fast and Furious has some good car chases as well. Uh, but we haven't gotten an MCU car chase, and correct me if I'm wrong, since Winter Soldier? Is yeah. that the last time we got a legit car chase, which was, you know, obviously Nick Fury yeah. and running away from S.H.I.E.L.D. and obviously Bucky coming in like the uh, uh, Terminator. Uh, but I thought that that one shot of them, you know, how they edited that and cut that, of them going through the, the streets of New York, making their way on the bridge. You mentioned it earlier, Chris, in regards to a little Easter egg here. I don't know if you guys caught it or not regarding uh, one of these. First off, let me pull up these trick arrows that Kate was using. It was pretty, so pretty fun. funny. You got one for everything that Clint has. But the one that really surprised me was this, this yes. pin uh, 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 um, arrow, which is pretty cool. Like it goes back to number one. This is like almost a very similar shot to Civil War. But it just, this is the world building. This is stuff I love about Marvel that it's just like little Easter eggs like that get me so excited. But toss into you, Chris, since you weren't the biggest fan of that previous action scene, would you at least think of the arrow fight and getting this little Easter egg here? I did like the, this scene is much better for sure. I like the, the overall scene. I didn't love like the, like the, it was a little gimmicky because it's like, uh, like, and a lot of the, 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 the deaf thing is like, is he hearing some of the things that she's saying? Cause like he's like responding to it. Then it's like, then all of a sudden when they cut to it, it's like, you can't hear anything. I'm like, is it, are they just picking and choosing what he's hearing? Um, yeah. But <clears throat> I thought that I, as soon as I saw the Pim thing, I was like, okay, that's oh, that very cool. So that's, that's a nice yeah, yeah. touchback, a nice callback. Um, I like the little purple hues of all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it's cool like that we're getting to see these different arrows. And it's like, it's a, we've seen this, this type of scene in like a lot of content. So like, Pretty I cool. love to see that kind of just <laughs> energy and, and like, it's a good scene, like to do. Even quite, it's been done a million times, but it's like, yeah, because it's good. Like we, we like to see it. 
I agree, man. Amanda, did you enjoy the the chase, the car chase, the one take? Uh, Kate with the blowing up of the car, which she got some bodies on her on her resume. I, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure those dudes that were in that car that exploded, they're dead. Uh, so for my Batman doesn't kill people out there, Kate Bishop is a killer. Uh, but <laughs> your thoughts, Amanda, on seeing Kate and Clint going through the streets of New York with their uh, trick arrows? Oh, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. You actually got them to like trust each other too. I think that's really important. And like communication, this is their... as Kate said, right? Exactly. <laughs> and it's all communication. But I really love that he just kept handing her arrows. Yeah. And he's just like, you watch this one. And maybe this one does this. And then she's like, that doesn't do that. Like it was just really cute banter. Um, but it's also like, it's for me, it feels like it's their first mission together, kind of like their first breakout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like he's showing her the ropes and he's teaching her. And not that she doesn't know anything, but it's more of like, you're under my wing. Ha. I said it. <laughs> and um, she thank you. and she's learning. So I really love the close ups yeah. on her when she was like, like pulling back and all of that. Um, she looks amazing. I love Haley so much. Yeah. Um, I actually screamed when I saw the Hank. That was so arrow. dope. I don't know I what was it like, was. Yeah, I just love that, that like so little good. stuff. Yeah, it's like that just makes me miss Ant Man like so much. But it was such girl. a good callback. Hey, yeah. there was a car chase in Ant Man too, which was <laughs> awesome. Um, oh, true, think, true. Yeah, yeah I'm about that one with, with the, the Hot yeah, Wheels. Yeah. Come the, on, yeah. Yeah. it was and, okay. Anyways, yeah, um, I, I, I tend to forget about that movie, man. And that was bad. It's just not that memorable as it should be. But yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. But yeah, I loved it. I I really loved it. I loved the trick arrows. I think that was just such a nice touch and like yeah. and like chris says like the purple is just everywhere obviously yeah and like cues the, yeah love it no, i agree, I agree. Um, but yeah, it was fun and this is where and i think amanda alluded to earlier the balance of action but then still going to those quieter moments as we move forward you know they after the action sequence they they go to fix his uh his hearing aid we get a nice little we finally get the official name of uh lucky the dog being uh, granted that name by kate uh, but it's in that conversation that they have at the diner in regards to, well, not even to the diner, when they're in her auntie's apartment, we still, and I love that the show's still giving us that Clint's the family man. Uh, what is it, Nathaniel or Nate is mm -hmm. his youngest child's Nathaniel. calling him. Yeah, in the middle yeah. of the night, uh, you know, he's bored, his mom, you know, all the siblings are, are asleep. And, you know, we get the whole thing of uh, Kate translating for him, which, is, again, I just love all the stuff that this Echo character and also uh, Makari from Eternals that we're getting all types of people seeing themselves on the screen. Mm -hmm. So I love that moment there. But listen, Amanda we've seen enough movies to know when someone says, I promise you, I'm going to do this. I promise you, I'm going to be home for Christmas. Who's going to die first. Are we talking Clint Stop. or one of those kids or his wife? Stop. They're not going to be home for Christmas, Amanda. So I, yeah, I, it's, they are. It's, it's, it's too obvious no. too. It's, it's handed to us. You can't no. make promises that you can't keep. No. Your thoughts on this. Number one, the kind of emotional moment, Clint, the family man, but is Clint going to make it home for Christmas? I really do think so. First of all, this is six episodes. They're not yeah. going to kill Clint Barton off right before <laughs> yeah. Christmas. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> they not. set up it's, the it's, whole it's, show. You're right. You're right. Christmas. <laughs> that would be the. That would be that would horrible. Be extremely dark. That's if, like something yeah. Warner Brothers would do for <laughs> exactly. DC. Okay. Like, yeah, exactly. Would kill the whole family. <laughs> kill the Decimated. whole family. That's it. <laughs> but. Um, no, he's not going anywhere. That was such a beautiful moment. And again, you're yeah. showing that he's like this this father figure for so many people, not only. Um, I actually teared up to Caitlin uh, when Nathaniel called. It was just such a sweet moment. Again, like writing everything down. Kate comes in and, you know, they have that connection and it's slowly building and you need those like emotional moments to connect them, I think. And that was a big one. That was a big yeah. one because she even knows like, like this is a dad. He's like chilling with me because I'm being yeah. dumb and I know all of this. Yeah. And like, he's here because of me. I did this. So she knows and she wants to help like that. So um, it was such a cute moment. But yeah, I originally thought that Clint was going to die because like I just didn't. Yeah. Eh. It's Barton. Like, that's fine. He's old. I don't think he's going to stick around <laughs> for much longer. I'm just Sorry. saying. If he's going to die in anything, it's going to be in the Echo Show. If he's going to be in the Echo Show, I don't think that's going to be revenge. in this one. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. would be a pretty interesting arc for that character if it goes that route. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe she sees the light, but then she just can't get over the fact that he killed her dad. If she finds out his identity, which I think will be uh, something that will be revealed. But uh, Chris, man, same question for you. The emotional beat there with the the, the Clint, the father, the the family man. And uh, again, not to be cynical, man, but is it is it going to get dark? Is is Clint not going to? And it, it doesn't have to be death, but is he going to no. make it home for Christmas? I think he's going to make it home for Christmas and not die. 
Yeah. Like, when does this show end? Like, they're not they're not going to kill this guy. For it's going to literally be the week it's of Christmas. It's the 22nd, right? Yeah. 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 yeah this, 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 is, this, is, this is Disney. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> they're, not, they're not killing a white guy before Christmas. You crazy? Um, I think... Uh, I think before this scene, maybe we didn't, maybe we skipped over it, but a, a nice little moment for me personally was when he told her that she's like one of the best archers in the, in the history of the yeah, world. Think, yeah, think, kind of yeah, they're on the train. Yeah, um, great call, Chris. Yeah. I <laughs> like that a lot. Mm-hmm. That, mo- that whole moment, you know, just like the dialogue between them has always been good. Yeah. Um, and of course, the, when the kid calls, it's like really sad and it's like, it's a good scene. It's like the ser- like one of the serious moments of the episode. I, I, I had no complaints with this episode at all, with, with that scene at all. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just was confused about like the hearing. It's like, can he hear stuff, or like, is he just like saying things? Like, is a lot. Of, it was a weird sometimes where it's like, it's clear that he can hear what she just said. Yeah. Um. So it's just a little inconsistent because like when you get on the phone with the, with Nathaniel, it's like he can't hear anything. It's just like all oh, he's like underwater. Yeah. But I do think again, he gets home for Christmas and he doesn't die. Okay. All right. Like I said, I'll, I'll take I'll take off my like a man. I said my DC hat because um, <laughs> honestly, when I saw that trailer of Hawkeye uh, and when they showed the kids getting into the, the truck to go back to wherever their secret hideout is, I thought that the truck was gonna blow up in front of Clint <gasps> and go down this dark path of oh, minions. Damn. But hey, it's Disney. It's Mickey Mouse. They're not getting that dark. Uh, but moving on, cutting to uh, Maya talking to her friend, and this is where we yet again get another kingpin reference regarding. Uh, keeping a low profile, your uncle, and he didn't say your uncle. He said like uncle. He just said uncle, like it's his uncle too. So I don't know if it's mm-hmm. if he like adopts these like orphan kids or whatever the case may be. But I I, I don't know if they're cousins. Uh, uh, but neither here nor there. He talks about the uncle not being uh the happiest uh if they continue to go down this path of finding out who Ronan is, and she reminds her her friend that uh, she's the boss, which I love that moment there. But kind of uh you know wrapping up the episode here as we kind of get the the moment where. Again, Kate Bishop is is low key like a, a Batman. She has technology just at the palm of her hands with her mom's uh, security oh, company, which we didn't get yeah. her mom this episode. Which would be that was a good scene. I like that scene actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we didn't get Eleanor. She's still in the background somewhere doing her thing. Uh, but Thank we God. go go to the house, and uh, you know she's looking on the computer. And uh, Clint, you know, his, his earpiece is fixed, which, uh, by the way, that joke of, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just so, like a dad joke, but or Kate Bishop joke when she mentions, you know, maybe you shouldn't be Hawkeye, you should be Hawk ear, but doom, doom. Uh, great. That was <laughs> great. It, it, I mean, of course, it's corny, but it's, it's better because she texted it to him right now. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's like, the, the, he, had, he, like, he thinks he's getting some serious message, and it's yeah. just this nonsense. <laughs> blocked, uh, deleted, blocked. Yeah, she, she's, yeah. And, and also, too, yeah. just to rewind a little bit, the whole conversation about being a role model. Model. So it's some really good dialogue in this episode. The the mentor yeah. thing and the role model. There's some some good stuff going on. But wrapping it up. Again, Clint tells Kate about the tracksuit mafia that they built their way up. There's another head honcho that's beyond and higher than Maya. Again, Kingpin. Uh, but we go to the penthouse. They're on a laptop. Clint hears something and he comes across Jack. He officially meets Jack as he has the Ronin sword up to his face. Kicking it to you, Chris, as we wrap up the episode, uh, how did you feel the ending of everything kind of wrapping up with, again, learning about a little bit more of the track star, uh, uh, track suit mafia, but more importantly, uh, this the track star. Uh, more importantly, Ronan, <laughs> Ronan having his own sword uh, up to his throat. Yeah, I like that scene at the at the ending because especially the joke about how like he's like, I'm in the wrong business. Like he like he doesn't realize like this girl's like actually rich and like he's probably wondering like why the hell do you even do all this dumb shit? Like you can just be rich and happy. Um, but I thought that was cool. Um, the ending, I, I was very surprised that it was ending because I, I wasn't checking the time. I thought it would it'd be Same. a little longer, but I guess when I it got to the end, it was uh just 44 minutes. Yeah, um, so uh, I was very surprised. Of, yeah, 37, like 40, yeah, seven mm-hmm. minutes of credits. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, of course, I'm watching like an idiot, there's nothing at the end. <laughs> um, so I was, I was surprised that it ended so quickly, but I was like, okay, I, I see what's happening here. But in the end, as soon as it ended, I was like, damn, what did I get from this episode? So I was kind of like, damn, like, what the hell. Um, but I thought it was cool. Like, I mean, I don't like, I think the mom character is just weird to me. So I'm, I'm happy not seeing her in the episode and I'm interested to see mm-hmm. for episode four, this like standoff between, you know, yeah. this dude who reminds me of the Wonder Woman 84 guy and, uh, and, 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 Clint. 
Uh, uh, Maxwell Lord. Uh, yeah, that yeah. could Wait. be better. He, yeah, the, the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Poor Pedro. He, he, he gives me that. Yeah, he gives me those vibes. I definitely agree with you. And and we got it. We we can't even forget. Uh, and tossing to you, Amanda. Yelena, she's still going to be coming up in this show. Yelena, uh, mm-hmm. forms to Will, and I, I assume it might be next week uh, or maybe okay. episode five, but she's still going to make a cameo or an appearance uh, in this show. So tossing to you, Amanda, your thoughts on this kind of wrapping up again, the tracksuit mafia backstory, being a low profile, there's someone higher than Maya. And of course we get Jack uh, introducing himself, or maybe they know each other because uh, they mm-hmm. know each other in the comics. Uh, Jack uh, introducing his sword to Ronan himself. Mm-hmm. What if he was Ronan? We were talking about like I mean, Chris, Chris saying that someone else. But maybe he... See? Chris just got the ball rolling. Yeah, you got the, yeah, yeah, they yeah, were okay. working together in the comics. He is the swordsman in the comics. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Never know. So I that's like a possibility. it. I like it. Yeah. <clears throat> you heard it here first, guys. You heard it here first, guys. Yeah. All three of us, big brain. <laughs> we, just, <laughs> we did it. You to mind from the. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what we doing it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't expect that it was it was ending either. I was like, wait, yeah, what? Like, I actually enjoyed it, this yeah. episode, and it went mm-hmm. by this fast. Like, shocking. Um, but yeah, it, it was great i i love that clint was in there with kate and kate's just so funny she just so i'm gonna break in here and i'm gonna do this and like she's just so mischievous and i love it um i do think that kingpin will be finale bound mm-hmm. like the last episode i think yelena is coming in four and i mm-hmm. feel like we're, there's gonna be another surprise in five i think if it's not yelena like yeah. i think there's gonna be another surprise like maybe even mm-hmm. like julia louis dreyfus can pop up as as uh what's her name um, um Valentina Val, or yeah, Valentina. Yeah, Valentina. Yeah. I think that she could also be involved in this somehow. But yeah, I, I enjoyed this episode more than the other two. I think yeah, they're heading here. in the right direction. Um, if they keep the writing balance like this, I think that I'll probably enjoy it even more than uh I thought I would. So yeah, I agree. I thought this is to me was uh, a much more superior, uh, like a man alluded to. I thought the action was uh, really well done. I love again, I'm, I'm biased because I love car chases, and I thought it was a good one. But mm-hmm. also, the, the, again, the quieter moments and the Daniel moment, um, the Maya moment at the beginning. I thought this was a really, really, really good episode in my opinion. Um, but again, Amanda, I know you said you had a, a theory. You mentioned a little bit of a theory earlier uh, regarding the uh, uh, you know the weapons on the street. We talked a little bit about Kingpin. Is, is there is mm. there a theory that you got uh, going that you might want to uh, allude to or talk about? Yeah, well, I think that Echo, like the title of the show is going to, like it's a diversion where like Kingpin's going to be heavy in that mm. series as well. Mm-hmm. And I do think like that's how they're going to set up Daredevil. They'll probably bring in She-Hulk at the same time. Ooh. Like that's where I'm thinking yeah, yeah, yeah. that it could lead and like have the yeah. lawyers step in. I love it. In that case with I Kingpin. Yep. So I, I think that it's, they're smart with calling it Echo. Yeah. Uh, so I really do think that it's a diversion. Um, and then we're going to get like the big heavies in that one. And it'd be <sighs> really cool to open it up that way for the ground, the ground level. Of I NYC, love where your so. mind's at, Amanda. Because yes, that yeah. would, I mean, for Jennifer and and, and uh, Charlie Cox, if he is brought back as uh, Daredevil, yeah. um, Matt Murdock, that would be great. If like, you know, he was maybe a, a temp for her at some point or worked yeah. under the same uh, a lawyer firm, that would be great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris, any, any any theories? I know you had the big one, man, about the Ronin. Yeah. Is there any, any other theories you got for us, man? No, no, no. I'm retired from theories. Retired. Okay. That's <laughs> no, no, no. That's I, I really don't have any theories, but I don't know much about the Seahawk character at all, so I, I'm just excited to see that character. In, in, yeah, I'm looking forward any, to that as well, man. In yeah. any capacity, you guys just give me my homework, so I will leave it. All right, I got one. I got a theory for you guys that I was thinking about after I watched this episode, and just kind of thinking of phase four so far, so stick with me here. So, so far, we know from Falcon and Winter Soldier that, um, and also I should take this back to, to Homecoming, the Chitauri weapons being out there and how Vulture mm-hmm. got his weapons, the sands on the weapons, but also we know that the Avengers compound was raided and there's, you know, Tony Stark tech out there. As we know, that watch, that watch is still out there with the significance of the watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm thinking that they, which what Marvel might be doing with their TV shows is kind of building this Tony Stark, we need to get his weapons off the streets, whether it be with Ironheart, whether it be with Armored Wars, with Rhodey coming into the mix, and then even which is the only way you can redeem this character, the power broker, the power broker, Shannon oh, Carter, <laughs> coming into the God. mix, she might have ties with the street level, go. with the King Tang character, which might lead to more of this street level. Uh, again, we're, we're multiverse. We're dealing with Doctor Strange, X-Men, Spider-Man, but I think on a street level, 
your Hawkeyes, Kate Bishop, yep. your Iron Hearts, your uh, roadies of the world. They're going to be dealing with getting Tony's weapons off the streets, which even ties to Shang-Chi with uh, his daughter or his sister being the head of the Ten Rings. I think that we're going to get yeah. this whole thing shaping up to these uh, Tony Stark's armor. And the big bad at the end of that road will be no other than Dr. Doom trying to get all the technology because he's oh, a big wow. tech guy. Oof. I think that's what we're leading to after we get, you know, <laughs> Kang and, and Doom and, and all that stuff. So I'm just, that's where Mind my mind's blown. at right now. That's Mind where I'm is at blown. Right now. So Well done, Elliot. Well done. We'll see if all that comes to fruition <laughs> in the next few, uh, you know, years with the MCU and all this stuff out there. But uh, I'm excited after this episode. And again, if we get this guy coming up in the finale, of episode five, uh, you know, and, and shaking up some things, and uh, you know, I, I, I just can't wait. And again, we just got to pull this up one more time, Kevin Feige. Yeah. What, what you thinking, Kevin? Did we, did we, are, we, are we on the road to talking <laughs> some stuff here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, you had on. <laughs> right. where, where, where do you have it? As we're, we're at the exact halfway mark. Yeah. Where do you mm -hmm. have it ranked? If you can remember where you were for the other half seasons for the other episodes, for the that's series. That's a great question, man. Um, that's a great question, Chris. I don't know, Amanda. You might keep. keep, keep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How about you, Chris? How about you answer yeah, your question? You we'll, we'll what? You no, I think, I, honestly, I'm just trying to recollect. Low, uh, low key still kind of stands out to me, man. Low key uh, started like low key started hot and stayed like yeah, it's pretty much yeah. stayed hot. So at the halfway mark, yeah. Personally, I would have this higher than the Falcon halfway point for sure. Obviously, what was episode so three? Falcon was talking about power bro. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it power was it power bro? It went to the club. Remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they had yeah. the we went to Magic Boy. You're right. Oh, yeah. the club. We the oh, club. That was so with, bad. With the drink and the, the venom. Yes. Fans. Yes. Yeah. That was so bad. Yeah. At the halfway <laughs> mark of, of Wanda, I was more invested. <laughs> So I, would say, I would say third. I guess this is then. It's just, oh, this only. This is the fourth show, right? Yeah. If we're not counting what if, yeah, the live action. Yeah, yeah we're not yeah. counting what if. So yeah. So yeah. then I guess this will be. The, I I put this as third. Yeah, I think I'm right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think the, I think the internet. I think the internet be, would, would have it last. What was WandaVision third episode? Was it where they? No, not, not third episode, but half because Wanda's. Is oh, so it's the right. fourth the, episode okay, when you, when you, they brought yes. what's her name in Monica. Yeah, in. Monica Rambo. Okay, that was. But you're talking episode. about as far as like the halfway, the halfway point, halfway point. Those, yeah. the the six episode um, series. I got you. Yeah, this this is number three because yep. Loki. Yeah, I would put I'm three. There. Three, but I'm excited, man. I'm I'm looking forward to episode four again. Just the fact that we know Yelena's coming, uh, we we can all allude to Kingpin maybe in appearing. I don't know if we're gonna get a Daredevil. I think that might be too much to put on this show wow. shoulder, uh, while yeah. still telling Clint's story, True. while still <laughs> introducing Kate Bishop. Uh, but it's looking promising, man. Uh, and I'm excited for episode six. So, uh, hey. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We talk Spider-Man. We talk Hawkeye. Uh, you know, it was a great discussion. I always have a great time with these two wonderful people. Mm -hmm. So, Amanda, outroing, uh, where can yeah. the wonderful folks at home find you? And, again, if you want to remind them what you got coming up on your platforms. Yeah, well, you guys can always find me over at AMX ND Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Um, I'm reviewing Hawkeye over at Geek Bomb. I'm the editor and social media manager there, so you can go give that uh, a look. I have. I'm gonna review Single All the Way tomorrow because oh my God, I am I'm a sucker for those movies. So. I'm going to do that. <laughs> you can check that out. I have my Power of the Dog review up. The Last Duel just dropped on Disney+, Plus, so I highly recommend that you watch that. I know that Ridley Scott's going off the wire, but it's a very good movie. And and the cast is phenomenal. Um, then I have my Don't Look Up review. I have West Side Story on Monday, so you can keep that on lock. Yeah, CandidXCinema.com, my website. Definitely. And I didn't know uh, The Last Duel's on Disney. I didn't know that hit yeah, the... Today I didn't drop. know that at yeah. all. <clears throat> so today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it said it, yeah. it did not do well at the theaters, no. my friend. But I heard, um, is it, it's, it's, I heard it is good, though. No? I enjoyed I'm, it. I enjoyed really, yeah, I'm right yeah. there with you, man. Both I thought, um, what's, what's the young lady's name? Um, Jody Coltmer. Oh, she was, whew, oh she was great. God. And Adam Driver, I, whew, man, I want Phenomenal. to punch him a thousand times. He was, yeah. he was such a good, bad guy yeah. in the movie. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a good it's a good film, uh, Chris. Minus really Scott's silly ass comments about millennials. Yeah. Anyway, it's a good film, man. Definitely recommend yeah. checking it out. But tossing it to you, Chris, man, if you want to let the fine folks at home know where you, they can find you and what's next on Taste Take. Yeah, 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 for sure. If you're still hanging with us, for sure, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't done that already, that'll be really cool. Mm -hmm. um, you guys can find me at Tate's Take. I'm still doing insecure reviews for HBO. We just passed episode six or seven, eight. Maybe there's four more. So I'm still doing that. I also watched Single All, Single All the Way, a genius title. 
Um, I'm not reviewing <laughs> it though, but um, <laughs> um, I'm going to check out, like I mentioned earlier this weekend, um, a journal to Jordan with Michael B. Jordan, the Denzel production. And then I'll be checking out Don't Look Up on Friday. So hopefully two reviews for those two. So get those out. Do it, guys. Again, Amanda and Chris's, their links are in the bio. Check out their websites, their Instagrams, uh, which, by the way, Chris, I know you did an interview the other day that I want to uh, check out uh, yeah. when you were talking oh, yeah, about yeah, the yeah, Harley yeah. Fall and some other great stuff you recommended. So check out this man. He's, he's making moves, man. This man's getting interviewed and all that stuff, <laughs> man. He's doing his damn thing. Uh, but listen, guys, you this has been a great discussion, as it always is. Uh, keep an eye out for... Uh, some some reviews coming on this channel. Uh, West Side Story tomorrow. Uh, Secession, you know, covering that every Sunday. I'm a big fan yep. of that show. So hope you guys are enjoying it as well. So again, for myself, Amanda and Chris, everyone that joined us live, I appreciate every single one of you all. The liking, the sharing, the super chat earlier from Pave, uh, Pound the Pavement. And if you watched on the replay, I appreciate you appreciate you all as well. Again, happy December 1st. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And uh, we'll catch you next week with Elena shutting it all down in episode four, hopefully. But you guys have a good one. We'll catch you on the next one.